Step on up. We're good? All right, welcome YouTube. Welcome here in the live studio. Welcome on Zoom uh, to this interview. It's gonna be phenomenal with Marvin Mitchell, Storm Leroy, and Ash Cash. Legends in the game. And um, today we're gonna be talking about why more black people aren't rich, right? And the reality is it's why, gonna be why more people aren't rich. But we knew if we said why more black people aren't rich, you would click on the <laughs> thumbnail. So that's why you're here. Anyway, Marvin, welcome. Storm, welcome. Ash Cash, welcome. Absolutely. How are you guys doing this morning? Uh, we doing uh, phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal. Great to be here, of course. Yeah. Great, great, Always. To, great to be here, indeed. So we have, uh, it's, it's so interesting. It's so interesting. So much conversation around. And some people would say, some people would say, well, you shouldn't have a video called why more black people aren't rich. So here's what, my, here's what I would say to that. Now you guys tell me what you would say to that. I would say, if that's what you believe, when you create a video, don't create one called Why More Black People Aren't Rich. What would you say? <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say to that, Marvin? Why, why create a video called Why More Black People Aren't Rich? Well, first point, more people are going to click on it. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. number one. Mm -hmm. But also, if you do, um, do your research, you'll notice that the culture of the African-American population uh, in the United States, anyway, is um, we're, we're we're not leading the path, mm -hmm. right? And 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 I believe that we have abundance is is our birthright just as much as is anybody else's birthright. Sure, sure. And um, granted, there's a lot of history to that and, and reasons that you can make excuses, but I also believe that we're beyond the stages of history and excuses, and we're at a new stage where we can create whatever we want to create. Mm. And uh, now we're at a point where we have the same ability to create and believe just like anybody else. So now it's mm. our time to say, you know what? I believe that we can turn things around and become one of Come the on wealthiest now. cultures in a country. Mm. It, it, so I'm going to tell you what I heard when I heard you say that. Uh -huh. Okay. I heard you say that your history doesn't have to imprison your destiny. Exactly. Come on now. Um, your, um, my grandmother used to tell me, Never let your circumstances dictate the outcome of your life. Mm, come Only on now. you can dictate the outcome of your life because come you're the captain of your soul. Come on now. Well, and, and one, one thing I'll add, though, too, is that when I, when I hear a title like that, right, I believe everything is about energetic alignment, right? So mm -hmm. you have to align yourself and you got to be ready for the message. Um, somebody that would click on something that says why black people aren't rich is somebody that's energetically aligned with rich. Mm. Right? And so mm. if they are that person... They're going to want to understand the, the, the knowledge. Like, why aren't black people rich? All right, what can I do to help? So they, these are solution-oriented people who are now curious as to, to the, the answer. But then they'll, they'll know now when they get in the answer to it, and we'll give them that solution. So now they're, like, like psychologically, they're saying, you know what? I am energetically aligned with this message. They're in alignment with that I assignment. I that message. Mm. And so now they are a person that they are rich already mm. by even just clicking on it. Good stuff. Storm, what about you? What would you say? Why, why, why I have a video entitled Why Black People Aren't Rich? Talk to me. My thought process about it 100% is that now it's easier to digest coming from someone that looks like you. Mm. Automatically you look and go, okay, now they would have the answers because they look like me, they're not other, and now I don't have to try to balance any kind of uh, message that might be misleading. Mm. And now they're easier to take it and make strides towards what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And now they can look at you and see that you're coming from a place of actually achieving that thing you're saying that's the problem, so, and they can act on it. So that commonality then creates a level of confidence. If yeah. there are black people who are rich, talking about how why black, more black people aren't rich, it inspires and empowers more black people to feel like they can become rich. Absolutely. So good, man, so good. So, so. Why don't you three guys introduce yourself? Um, yeah. In fact, why don't we start down here with Ash Cash. Uh, Ash, introduce yourself. Tell people who you are and um, what you do and how you help people become rich. Yeah, so my name is Ash Cash, the financial motivator. Uh, I am an author, 12-time uh, author. 12 uh, books. 12 books. I need to step up my game. Right. <laughs> but, but I, I've sold over 100,000 books, but I, I, you did it with one. So I'm, I'm actually okay. that to you. Okay, um, all right, all but, right. But I've sold over 100,000 books. Um, you know, I grew up in the, in the projects in New York City, uh, St. Wow. Nicholas Projects, uh, single parent home, kicked out of school four times, uh, expelled one time, so, you know, in the 10th grade. Um, grades were so bad 
uh, that I couldn't, you know, get into college. I had to go to my community college. Um, but and they, they told me I'll be dead or in jail by the age of 24. By 24, I was a VP at one of the largest financial institutions in the world. Um, by mm. 31, I was a CEO of a credit union. Um, and then now I'm one of the, the top financial educators on the planet. Not Come just on in now. America, on the planet. On the planet. On the planet. On, the planet. Um, on God's green earth. And so, um, you know, I help people understand that abundance is their birthright. Mm. Um, I help them understand that regardless of your circumstance, where you come from, what your background is, um, as long as you uh, change your mindset, you could be, have, or do anything uh, that you want. Um, and I also host, uh, you know, a, a very popular podcast called Inside the Vault, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Uh, and all, all alumni, though, too. Hey. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, so, uh, and so that's, that's who Ash Cash is. Good yeah. stuff, Ash. Storm Leroy, why don't you tell everybody who you are and how you help people, black people become rich? Hey, I'm Storm Leroy, uh, better known as the employed millionaire. You know, I started out from Brooklyn, New York. I started by working Verizon, making $400 a week. And mm. I understood that me working 20 or 30 years towards a retirement, in between that time, if I couldn't figure out something better to do in between 20 or 30 years, I left it up to them to dictate the rest of my life. So what I did was I realized that my, my uh, salary, my job was my first business partner. Mm. So through the lessons of my father who taught me that uh, hard work really just led to me being tired but gaining knowledge and experience if I need to take that momentum from hard work to do something with it. He always wanted to invest in real estate. Mm. He couldn't invest in real estate due to redlining back in the era. I'm, I'm an older guy, 70s baby. So when I bought my first piece of so property. So you're a 70s baby and you're an older guy, so what am I? <laughs> Never mind. We'll, we'll have that conversation you know later. I mean? We'll have that conversation later, bro. I, I don't even know what just happened. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so I bought my first piece of real estate and it actually changed my life. Mm. That first piece of real estate changed my life. But, I, but one of the most untold stories about investing in real estate that a lot of people don't share is once you buy that piece of real estate, you become a landlord. Mm. And once I became a landlord, I actually created another job. Mm. And that part was really nerve wracking for me. Mm. I already had a boss, I already had someone who can give me orders and tell me what to do. And now I had tenants who were doing the same thing. So mm. I stopped buying real estate. Mm. But then in 2015, I started, I bought my first property out of state. I, I developed a team, property managers. And by buying that first property, I never had to touch it. I never had to deal with the tenants. I was making 80% return on my money. Mm. I went on to buy over 34 properties that I never seen touch or had to manage. Wow. I built a portfolio of three million dollars making twenty thousand dollars a month. Mm. So with that, I replaced my salary, walked into my job and said, it's time for me to go. It's time for us to part ways. But it was all to the benefits of having a job. Mm. Your job is your first business partner. The job allowed me to put it on an application to be able to get a down payment on a loan. Mm. The job allowed me to be able to make payments to get my credit score up for the application. Mm. The job gave me the weekends off, the days off to be able to grow my business. So that's what I always say, your job is your first business partner. Whoa, that was yeah. good, bro. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. All right, Marv, talk to me. What do you do? How do you help black people become rich? Well, I, I am black wealth, right? Um, mm. From the standpoint, that's what I do. I've been teaching this for 15, 16 years, 21, straight out of college. I've been a financial advisor who, t who taught wealth principles since I started. And the reason why I started is I saw uh, what happens when, when wealth isn't taught. Mm. I saw my grandmother who got sick with cancer and she saved the traditional way in her 401ks, worked the same job for 40 years, mm. um, ended up uh, passing away feeling like she was a burden on the family because she had to deplete her entire portfolio because she got bad advice from an advisor, traditional mm. advisor, and she lost all of her assets. And then in addition, she was never told about long-term care or anything like that. So she passed away on Medicaid. Mm. And she was a strong, independent woman. Mm. So just imagine that she didn't, want our, she didn't want to get our help, but she needed our help. Mm. And that was really tough on me personally because she made me trusted me enough to be her durable power of attorney because mm. i was the first person in my family to attend college so by default i became the person who was looking after her finances but i knew absolutely nothing mm. about finances at that time so it motivated motivated me and it drove me and i said i'm going to make a change i'm going to be a generational curse breaker i'm going to make sure that what happened to my grandmother never happens to anybody else i come into contact with and i followed the 
path to say I'm going to change the system. But I realized that system was so ingrained into, see, the financial education system is just a byproduct of the educational system in general. Danger will run. You call it Danger. the miseducation system. I so do. imagine do. that. Most financial advisors are broke. Mm -hmm. Most financial advisors have filed, uh, a lot of, fin not most, but a lot of financial advisors are struggling. Some of them have filed bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. And those are the people We're who advising are advising people. millionaires on what to do with their money. So what I realized that I was doing the exact same thing to my clients that that advisor did to my grandmother years ago. It hit me like a ton of bricks and I realized that I didn't want to stay there. So I was at a place where I was making $100,000 a year, which at the time I grew up poor, homeless, living in a shelter. Wow. So my mom had me when she was 15. So making six figures was a lot of money. I was only 23 years old making Crazy six time. figures. But I decided to walk away because my conscience wouldn't allow me to stay in that particular place. And I wanted to go out and learn what actual millionaires and even some billionaires were doing. And what I found is that they were not following the same advice that they're telling you to follow. Mm. They were not going out and, and uh, working for a company for 40 years and sticking it all in their 401k so that when they retire, they can pay taxes on 40% of that money. Mm. They were not being in control, being controlled by the government where the government can decide, you know what, we feel like getting a little bit more money. Let's go ahead and increase their taxes. In fact, they were putting themselves into positions where with structure that they owned no nothing and controlled everything. Mm. They were in a position where they actually controlled the taxes that they paid through knowledge and through wisdom and through education. And they were actually paying less taxes mm. than some of the people who are everyday people like teachers. Mm. You know what I mean? So when I learned that, I said I can be mad at that. Or I can learn how to do that and I can teach other people how to do that. So I studied, I read everything that I could, Think and Grow Rich, The Science of Getting Rich, everything that I could about money, every book cash flow, every quadrant, book quadrant. Rich in the title. I'm everything that said rich, I'm trying to learn it. It's about rich, let's go, right? <laughs> because, because here's the advantage. This is what I learned. If 76% of people run out of money, so if I could just do the opposite of what 76% of people are doing, so good, bro. Then I can transition my mind. And also when I learned that I've been in the game, I saw what financial advisors did and what they could not do. So again, if I changed my approach and I learned what the financial industry wasn't teaching you, I would have an extremely competitive advantage. Mm. And that's what I decided to do. I learned different strategies, different ways to leverage your money. I learned how debt can be a tool if you use it the right way. And I really learned how to create wealth and be a wealth creator instead of diminishing my wealth. Mm, so good, so good. These guys, can y'all tell these guys are fire? Yeah. Um, and for those of you who don't know me, I mean, I know a lot of y'all know who I am because you watch my YouTube channel, but um, I, my name is Myron Golden, and um, what, how did I create wealth? I hated being broke, that's where it started for me. Um, I, you know, I, I learned most of my life subconsciously, somehow, that poverty was piety and wealth was wickedness. And, and I had some internal conflicts about making money, but they weren't strong enough to keep me from wanting to make it. Mm. Um, and somebody could talk to me about the, about the virtues of being broke all they wanted to, but I was broke most of my life and mm. I didn't find much virtue in it. And, um, <laughs> and I accidentally discovered a principle when I shifted my mindset back in 1999. So in 1998, I made um, $48,000 for the whole year. A whole year went by and I only made $48,000. Well then, um, I applied some principles that I learned, and when I applied the principles that I learned, in 1999, April of 1999, I remember it like it was yesterday, I accidentally made $6,200 in one week. Mm. $6,200 in one week. I want you to wrap your mind around what I just said. Like, if you're making 48000 a year, and you make $6,200 in a week, that's like, if you want to extrapolate that out, that's like $300,000. Like, what happened, right? And as soon as that happened, the first thing I said was, wow. <laughs> and then I said it backwards. I said, wow. <laughs> and then I said, I got to do that again. But it was so easy. I remember thinking, it was so easy. And I thought to myself, that must mean, this was my first financial breakthrough ever, guys. Like, the first like major financial revelation that I ever had was when I made that $6,200 in one week and I said, that must mean it's easier to make a lot of money mm. in a short period of time than it is to make a little money over a long period of time. And I decided, 
I, notice I didn't say I chose, I decided. Because there's a difference between a choice and a decision. Right? A choice is pick one. A decision, Latin root day, which means of or from, side, which means to cut, it means you cut yourself off from any other possibility. I decided in that day that from now on for the rest of my life, I'm only going to look for and I'm only going to look at the easier ways to make a lot of money. I'm going to ignore all the hard ways to make a little, uh, the easier ways to make a lot of money, and I'm going to ignore all the hard ways to make a little bit. I'm going to ignore them. And when I did that, I shifted my focus. Surprisingly, I started finding what I was looking for, mm -hmm. which were easier ways to make money. By July of that same year, I had my first $8,000 day. Wow. Just from a shift in focus, right? And then from there, it's gone kind of bananas. I uh, um, will more than likely do over $3 million in revenue in our business this month. And, and so, which sounds kind of crazy, right? This month. This month, yeah. This okay. Month. Um, and, th and that's coming from a guy who did well in school all the way through the third grade. And it went downhill from there. Um, uh, <laughs> I graduated from high school, <laughs> second in my class. My little brother was a valedictorian, okay, and now you know the rest of the story. Um, and I didn't graduate from college, um, but I learned some financial principles in my 20s that have changed my life forever. And now, um, fortunately, I was the first person in my family to become wealthy. My very first book that I wrote was called The Ebony Treasure Map, The Roadmap to Riches for African Americans, because I thought, mm. yeah, there are a lot of books about creating wealth, but there were no books for us, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I said, I want to create a book that called out my people, right? And I said, um, um, The Roadmap to Riches for African Americans, and what I did, we sold a bunch of books. Like, I was, I thought I was going to sell, like, 500 books, like, mm -hmm. ever, right? And so I got 500 books printed, and uh, we sold 900 books the first week. Uh, then we had to order 5,000 copies. Then we had no, another order, 15,000. And we just kept ordering the book. And then later, a couple years later, I changed the title to From the Trash Man to the Cash Man, How Anyone Can Get Rich Starting from Anywhere. So for those of you who've read that book, the original title of From the Trash Man to the Cash Man was uh, The Ebony Treasure Map, The Roadmap to Riches for African oh, Americans. A lot of people don't know that story. I right? had no idea. Right? Yeah. And, and, so, and so now I teach business owners how to scale their businesses through four moves that I call boss moves, and we've got clients who've made, uh, who've had six-figure days and seven-figure days, and um, and so that's what we do to help black people, uh, more black people get rich. Mm. So, and, and and I love what you said, Storm. Your job is your first business partner. I never really thought of it that way before. That's really powerful. It's yeah. the understanding of it because um, when I what what would happen with me was the frustration of going to work mm -hmm. would really have me saying to myself, well, this is what it's supposed to be. Mm. This is what it's supposed to feel like. You get it, we talk, we get up, we go to school, we, we go sit in a class, we get a bell, we go have lunch, then after lunch, we go back to class, then we go home, and that just transitioned into adulthood. Right. But once you graduate, you get up, you go to work, you have a bell, you go to lunch, mm -hmm. the bell's over, you go to, right. that's the transition, right? right? So once I realized that the frustration and the onus of that was on me, Come on it's now. like, what can I do to change this feeling? It doesn't mm. have to be this way. Mm. So I got up and then I started creating a plan for myself and saying that if the question was, not was, the question, the answer to the question is, if it takes me 30 years to retire and I say to myself, I'm going to give in to 30 years, why am I not finding something else to do in between now and 30 years? Boom. Why we don't ever find that answer? Because mm, so we're not now, looking for it. We're not looking for it. So I needed to say if I'm making $6,000 a month, the objective is to replace the salary of making $6,000 a month. That part. That part. Because we sit down, when we get a job, the job understands that it's going to underpay you to overperform. Mm. Mm. But then when we get paid, what we do, we only say, I'm going to pay bills. Mm. Instead of having a plan when the job came in with a plan for you. Mm. Come on now. So now, once I said, I'm going to take that money and do something with it, which was invest in real estate. And the objective for a lot of us, really, the premises which we hear about real estate is that it creates wealth. It, ha it has been doing it before we were even born. Sure. But the thought is, real estate doesn't have to always be expensive. Mm. There are places where real estate is 40000 50000 60000 even though we live in million-dollar places. I live in New York, mm -hmm. but I bought that first property out of state mm. for $40,000. Wow. I got a mortgage on a $40,000 property. The mortgage payment was only $250 a month. 
it was making $850 from Section 8, so I was making $600 a month, which was about $7,200 a year, and the down payment was $8,000. Mm. $8,000 down payment, $7,200 a year, that's about an 80% return on my money. Mm. And I said to myself, it's not about how much I'm making, it's the percentage. Mm. And if I, and then it's about I said, how much your money's making. How much my money's making. And if I'm making $60,000 a year, I got that one property making 70000 All I need is about eight properties. Oh, so snap. one property a year, that's eight years. So instead of 20 years or 30 years to retire, now I can replace that salary in eight years. Did y'all see how much game he just gave y'all? Eight years. Did y'all see how much game he just wait, gave y'all? What about the time it takes to, 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 to go and manage it? Thank you, my Ali, you let me catch that. <laughs> let me catch that. So now, once we understand that map, if we say to ourselves, well, let me, let me remember that every time I purchase a property every year, I'm doubling the money. So now I can buy two properties. And then the next year, a third property. And then on top of that, some of the most undervalued money that we get is our tax returns. Come on, here. Now you throw your tax returns in there. I said, wait a minute, so I'm going from eight years down to six years, down to five years, I said, I could leave my job in five years. Wow. And then once I understood the power of group economics and partnering on deals. Come on now. I started partnering, partnering with people to buy bigger properties. Because now the brain adjusts. 40000 is what I could afford. Mm -hmm. But once I started making money, I could afford an $80,000 property. Mm. So I have properties in Alabama, uh, Georgia, Ohio, Milwaukee, Florida place and I've never been to these places but with all that being said is what I'm telling you guys is I took eight thousand dollars and in five years I left my job I changed my life and I created a legacy and in 2019 I created a trust that would now change the life of my grandkids my great-grandkids my great-great-grandkids we need to understand the power of the air that we breathe in mm. the wealth you have is in your lungs Rockefeller did it with money, but when you pass away, you have a life insurance policy, you have money. Mm. It's what you're gonna do with that money when you pass away. So I won't get heavy into it, because I would love to. I mean, you, I you to, mentioned life you know, insurance. I gotta right, take that alley over. Here we go. Okay. You know what I mean? Here we go. All right. Let's go. So he talks about life insurance, and one of the ways that I help all people create wealth, but especially black people, because it was so underrepresented in our community, is through the use of life insurance, in a very unique way. Like most people, when they think about life insurance, it's like you get an agent that comes to you and they say, you need life insurance because if you don't, you're gonna start a GoFundMe page and, and you're gonna have to fry chicken in order to bury you. And, and yeah, and, and some of that is true, right? But the problem is when you make life insurance a need, people needs, people get the minimum when it comes to a need. When you make life insurance a want, people are gonna get the maximum when it's an actual want. So I started to tell my, um, ask myself, how can I make this a want instead of a need? And I said, what if we take the word life insurance and we actually do what it's defined, what it's defined as, right? It's not called death insurance. It's called life insurance. So what if we can use life insurance for my life mm. instead of just waiting until I die? Then we actually do accomplish two things. Number one, we benefit us while we're living, mm -hmm. but by default, we also have the death benefit that we need to pass on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. So I learned from the wealthy people that I talked about, the millionaires and the billionaires, that they were actually doing with life insurance. They were leveraging it in a way that they overfunded the policy. So they didn't try to buy the highest amount of death benefit for the lowest amount of cash value. They flipped it and they said, how can I pay the lowest amount for the death benefit? So more of that money will go to the cash value. And then once they accelerated the cash value, now it's tax free. That money is never gonna get taxed again. Now they can borrow against it. And when they borrow against it, that money continues to grow as if they never touched it because that life insurance became an asset. Mm. And now I'm gonna tell you really quickly how you can make your money grow five times out of one time. So what's the best way to become wealthy? Recycle the same money. Like mm. you always say, Myron, you want to be, you want to create money babies. This money is what babies. you said in your book. You want to have <laughs> pregnant money. Pregnant that money. means you want your money reproducing after its own kind and don't want those babies to make other babies. So how can you do that without ever killing off the parent? Mm. Keeping the parent growing. So the way that you do that is you, you funnel it through what I call the wealth creation fund. 
This is simply just your life insurance policy, not term. We're talking about permanent. We're talking about whole life or index universal life, specially funded, because if you fund it the right way, it's 70% less at the agent getting commissions, and more of that money goes to you. Now, this is how you make money one time off the same dollar. You put it into the wealth creation fund. That's one time. Second way you make money off the same dollar. Well, now that you have that money funneling through the life insurance policy, now I can borrow against it and I can go out and I can get a real estate deal mm -hmm. that Storm just talked about. Mm -hmm. Now I've just accelerated my retiring from six years to four. Mm -hmm. Now I can go out and say, well, how do I make that money work for me three times? Mm -hmm. So I learned that I could turn my credit into cash. Mm -hmm. So now I can go out what other people say it's bad to have debt. It's bad to have. Let me show you how to use that the right way instead of the wrong way. Oh, what if I took that credit card debt and I invested that debt into a place that's going to make me more money than the interest that I'm paying on that debt. But now I funneled it through the life insurance policy. I borrowed against the life insurance policy to pay off the credit card and the money is making money off the place. The money is making money off the points that I made from the credit card, and I'm making money from the life insurance policy. Stop. Can I go a little deeper? Please go a little, go a little deeper. Can I get a little deeper? Get the school gear. All right. Get the school gear. So, so now I've learned how to multi-leverage because I want my money to make money four to five times off the same dollar. So I, I got the, the property with the credit card. So I, made, I paid it off with my life insurance policy. So I made money off the life insurance policy, still going tax-free as if I never touched it. By the way, you don't have to pay that back. I'll get back to that. Now I'm making money off the credit card because of the points and I'm making money off the property. And if I want to hold that property because I'm building equity in that property, now I can do a, a HELOC mm. and now I can get another property. Now I'm making money off of two properties. I made money off the points from the credit card and I made money off the life insurance policy growing tax free. One more time, a little deeper. Come on now. You talked about a trust. So now you want to get a trust. You get an LLC. You set that LLC up with a trust, more tax benefits, and you can, pay, you can set up a life insurance retirement plan, and you do a, a irrevocable life insurance trust. They don't count against your estate taxes when you die, because many people don't understand. Life insurance, yes, it's tax-free, but if you make too much money, they can still tax you on estate tax. You can avoid the estate tax. Now you can funnel it to where you can actually control that trust from the grave, which means that when you die, that money can be set aside, and you can say, look, I got two children, all of y'all can relate to this probably, I got two children that are financially responsible. They're gonna do the right thing. But I got that one child that I don't know, if I gave them two million, I don't know, they're gonna be able to handle it. You could actually set it up where you could say, once they hit these landmarks, more of that money can be released. Once they hit a certain age, more of that money can be released. And guess what, if, I'm, if, if you get sued, they can't come after that life insurance. It's invisible to the government. No taxes, nobody can sue you for it. If, it, um, if, if your child, get a divorce or whatever, they can't come after that money even though they're the beneficiary because you own the policy. So there are so many things you can do with life insurance. The Catholic mass has been doing this for years. What they'll do is they'll find a high paying, tie pair in, in, in the mass and they'll say, instead of me having you just pay your tithes, how about I be, we become the owner of the policy and we pay your tithes to this policy? I am done. Now, I'm done. Now, I'm done. now when I'm you pass done. away, <laughs> we get a million dollars instead of your hundred thousand dollars. And oh, by the way, if you happen to leave the mass, we're the owners of it. We'll just pick up the policy and start paying it ourselves. So we still own the policy on your life, even if you're not a part of the mass. So with that being said, y'all, so many things you can do with life insurance. I'm going to go ahead and drop the mic, pass it over. <laughs> <laughs> and we ain't even talk about the Rockefeller Trust. You know what's amazing? You know what's amazing? What's that? What's amazing to me is that most people think it's either hard or impossible to create wealth. And y'all, we just named a bunch of different ways Absolutely. people can create wealth. You know, in, you, you talked about, um, my, in my book I talked about money, pregnant money and money having babies. But the other thing I talked about is the two-sentence wealth formula. Mm. The two-sentence wealth formula is this. If you want to be rich, this is sentence number one. If you want to be rich, find out what rich people do financially, mm. comma, and do the, do same, the same thing. thing. Period. Mm. Sentence number two. If you want to be rich, comma, all right, if you want to be rich, find out what poor people do, comma, mm. and whatever else you do, do the don't opposite. do that. Right. Right? And, and it sounds funny. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right? But, and that sounds funny, but it's, 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 it's so serious mm -hmm. that, yeah. that, if somebody takes it seriously, it'll change their lives. Mm -hmm. So I recommend people, in that book I recommend people, here's what you do, you go get a list. Yeah. And you do a Benjamin Franklin, you put a line across the top, you put a line down the middle, rich people do this, poor people do this, mm -hmm. and make a list of both. 
Rich people educate themselves. Do that. Poor people entertain themselves. Don't do that. Mm. Rich people, rich people read have big libraries with lots of books they read. Do that. Poor people have big televisions with lots of show they, shows mm. they watch. Don't, Don't do, do that. that. Right? Yeah. Um, um, uh, they're so poor people, rich people invest mm. their money. Poor people spend and save their money. And you can just go down the list of things that you, and if you, when you change those habits, because they are inputs, yeah. and inputs, cre inputs create outputs, the output has to change, Absolutely. right? Mm. So anyway, good stuff, Marvin, yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Ash Cash, come on, you know I was coming to yeah, you, bro. Yeah, no, what I'm saying, and I, and, and I, I want to talk about that, for, you know, as an ex-banker, right? Mm -hmm. Especially in our community, mm -hmm. we always talk, we, like, we, we push saving, 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 save your money. That is the fastest way that you can lose money, right, by 100%. saving that money. Because so you're, not, you're not getting paid, you know, you know, no interest rate, and, yep. and, and literally you're, 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 you're putting your money to die. So you have to invest it. But you said something that, that, that I want to expound on, right, and, you know, this is what I teach people how to become rich. Um, it's really the educational piece, right? 100%. Um, you know, you know, you know I've, I've been an entrepreneur for over 13 years. And as an entrepreneur, I've always, I was like, oh, man, I want to have a six-figure year. I want to, you know, have a, you know, I, I want to become a seven-figure entrepreneur, right? But once I got attached to a wealthy man who was now opening up my mind saying, you know what? You can make six figures in a day. Yes. It, was, it was something that I never thought of ever in my life. Mm. Same man says, hey, you can make seven figures in a day. I said, seven figures in a day? When can that happen? Um, and by, by simply just changing my, my mindset, connecting and aligning with the right people, you know, you're looking at three, three gentlemen who came from nothing, who were able to make $7 million in one single day, mm. right? And that was from the knowledge. That was from paying a mentor whatever they, they asked to be paid, listening to them and doing whatever they say, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'll be honest, when I paid the mentor, they were saying things that I was like, this guy is crazy. <laughs> What's wrong with him? Why I gotta be crazy? Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> why I gotta be crazy? Yeah. Why is yeah. crazy? I'm done. I'm through with you, you know, bro. I'm through with you. you. Know? And, but, but I say, you know what? Let me, let me listen, right? Because if I keep doing what I, keep, what, what I kept doing before, you I'm gonna keep, be keep, you gonna keep getting what you got? Exactly. What you but when doing? I look at your life and I look at what you've done and who you've helped and the other people you help, I say, ah, oh, this is the key. Mm. And so it's all about education. And what I realize now is that every single one of us has knowledge that we have, right? And, and with that knowledge, we can help people become a better version of where we are, right? Mm. And so if we are, you know, we, you know, at the space that we are and we have this knowledge, how can we take that knowledge and recycle that knowledge over and over again? And sure. that's why, you know, I, you know, I teach people, even if you don't have any money, if you have a lot of money, you can write a book, right? You can take that book. You can create an audio book. Like, we create 15 streams of income from books. You can create a, a, a master class. You can create a course. You can, and here's the, here's the great thing about it is that when you take a book and take that knowledge that you already have, that somebody already wants, and somebody is already looking for, and you take that one knowledge and you create 15 <laughs> streams of income from that one knowledge, now you're getting paid 15 mm -hmm. times different times mm. for something that you did with one, one time. time. And watch this, 15 different times from 100,000 people, 200,000 mm. people, a million people. Wow. Right? So yeah. it, here, here, here's the difference. Here's the difference. Here, watch this, y'all. We have been programmed by the miseducational misdirectional system, <laughs> camps and child prisons, schools, whatever you want to call them. We've been programmed by them to believe that you go to school, you study hard, you get good grades, you get a good job, so you can work 40 years and retire. And here's what most people find themselves doing. They find themselves going to work, go to work, go to work, go to work, go to work, get, get paid. paid. Go to work, 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 get paid. Go to work, 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 get paid. You know what sounds better to me? Go to work, get paid, get paid, get paid, get paid, get paid, go to work. Get paid, get paid, get paid, get paid. Right. That's what writing a book does. See, it's an. Here, I, I read a book called um, um, Twenty. Uh, I think it was Twenty Four Assets by Daniel Priestley. It might have been Key Person of Influence or Oversubscribe. But one of the things that he said that was so profound: income follows assets. Facts. And here's here's the problem. Here's the real problem: why uh, more black people aren't rich is because we don't have. And we don't acquire and accumulate assets mm -hmm. over a short enough period in our time in our lives to create wealth. And here's here's what you have to understand: 
if you're not acquiring and accumulating assets, you are someone else's asset. Ooh, mm. say that. Don't let that good. go through your head. Right? It's good. If you're not finding leverage, you're somebody else's leverage. And, and, and assets are leverage. And a book that you create, or an audio book that you put on Audible, or the course, or the coaching program, or the consulting, and the mastermind, and all the streams of income that you create from that one book, if you don't have that, then you can create it. If you say, but what am I an expert on? You are an expert on your own life. Mm. Myron, all I know how to do is cook. You can't make any money cooking. Tell that to Rachel Ray. Mm. I'm just a homemaker. You can't make any money just raising kids and, and keeping the house. Tell that to Martha Stewart. I think she's a billionaire with a B. Mm. Myron, all I know how to do is ask questions. And people say, I ask too many questions. You can't make any money asking questions. Tell that to Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. The, the thing that you know how to do and do well, there's someone, probably several someones, who are already making a fortune doing that. Mm. That very thing that you know how to do, that you're undervaluing, someone is using it to create wealth. Yep. Yeah. You said something, Myron, when you, you started your book out and you, you say you only you printed 500, but you want to do 900. Right, right? sold 900, so, yep. Sold so 900, which means that people wanted, wanted that information. 100%. And, and a lot that was of a times, sign. <laughs> a big sign. So a lot of times when I'm giving out the story, uh, uh, what makes us all unique is that I don't like to give the story of where I'm at now. Right, you know, 100%. How many millions, how much right. I made, this and that, because I feel that when people see the shiny object, they see the Ferrari or whatever it is, they ask the question of how much it costs instead of how did you get there. Mm. The, the, seeing the information, of seeing how the progression of the person who went from the Toyota Camry to the Ferrari, now you go, I just saw you in a Toyota Camry. Tell me, how did you get to the Ferrari? 100%. The question is so crucial, and how did I get there? Mm. So I always love to start from the bottom. I love to start with the 40000 the, the things that they can afford, 100%. the $40,000 property. The $8,000 down payment. The dollars I was making a week, the $8,000 down payment. I don't want to talk to you about the half a million, the $1 million, the $2 million deal I'm doing, because then that leads you to believe. But you can't oh, do that. I can't do that. Mm, so good, bro. You actually can. Let's give them the root of where we started Come on from. now, not just the fruit. Not just the fruit. Mm. People need to know your zero story before you tell them your hero, hero story. story. That's good. Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. That's yeah. the value. And, that, and, and, and it's so interesting because all of us can relate. Marvin, talk, Marvin talked about the fact um, he was homeless. He lived in a shelter. Like, when I first got married, I made this beautiful yeah. girl all these promises, right? And guess what happened? She was eight months pregnant with our first child, and our water and electricity were both disconnected mm. at the same time, mm. right? So I remember what that feels like. People say, why do you, oh, you're just doing this so you can make money. No, I'm doing this so you can make money. I don't yeah. need to do this to make money. My money made me over a million dollars last yeah. week yeah. With, without me doing anything. I don't do this so I can make money. I, mean, I take the money, but I don't yeah. do it so I can make money. I do it because there are so many other people that whose lives could be better right. yeah. by sharing the path. The difference between where you are right now and where you'd like to be is exactly the same yeah. as the difference between what you know and what you haven't learned and implemented yet. And I'm just going to say it's, it is important to go back to the root so that people can know where you're starting from. 100%. Uh, it's also equally as important to get out of the environment and, and, and see yeah. what you want to believe. You know, sometimes you got to. You got to believe it before you see it. Come on now. Sometimes all you got to do is just go see it. Mm -hmm. It's right there in front of your eyes. 100%. You walk out in the neighborhood. Let me say your, 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 your money, if you want to be a wealth, your money will only grow as far as your expectation. 100%. Your money will only grow as far as your mindset. And the only way to expand your mindset is to do things like read and change your environment and stop focusing on what used to be sometimes and start focusing on what can be. So if your mindset is here, mm -hmm. And then even if you even if you go out and 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 you have you gain this much money, let's say you win a lottery and you gain millions and millions of dollars. Guess what? That money can't stay there. You're going to find a way to self-sabotage. You're going to find a way to lose it because your mindset hasn't grown far enough yet. But if you take the time to read, pay for mentorships, get in the right rooms. And let's say your mindset is here and you have this much money. And let's say a disaster happens, Myron, and you lose it all. Come on now. Guess what? That money has to find a way to flow back to your mindset. Come on, Ham. It has to. So if you focus on, if you stop just focusing on how do I get more money, and you start focusing on how do I grow my mindset and get into the right environments and the spaces, that money has to flow to the place of your mindset. So all you have to do is focus on three things. How could I grow my skill set? 
How can I grow my mindset? And how can I grow my financial literacy? If you focus on those three things, the rest is history. Mm. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, that's the, that's the one. And, and, and I, and I want to I say that too. Uh, a lot of us in our community, we do it backwards, right? We think that if we get the money first, then you know we'll work on the mindset later. Mm. But like you know, Marvin mentioned, we get the money, but then we find ways to self-sabotage and get back to where we need to be. Mm -hmm. And so we need to understand as a community that it's the mindset first. Work on your mind. Mm. Whatever you do, work on that mind continuously because right mind, right money, right. But what if it costs a lot, Ash, to it, work on your mindset? But see, here's the thing that people <laughs> don't realize. If it costs a lot to work on your mind, it costs even more not to. Well, mm, say it that. It costs even more not to work on your mind. If you're like, man, like what's the cost? That's a mindset, mm. right? Because wealthy people don't don't look at the cost of something. Wealthy people look at the like the like, value, uh, the value of it, right? And right. So here's the cost. Here's the value. The value of it is, is going to outweigh the cost because if you don't do it, you won't get that value. If you don't get that value, then what what good is that cost? How much would have it cost you if you didn't pay for that mentorship you mentioned? It would have cost me over seven. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Think about that. How long? Second, How right? long? And, 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 and what? Two, two months. Two months. Two months, right? right? Just changing the mindset, right? Get into the mentorship within two months, make my first six figures in a day. Two months later, create a multi million dollar day. Wow. That's Just so from crazy. a seed, right? right? From a seed that it, I know that I had to, I had to plant it, and harvest. It, it's yeah. so interesting that y'all, all of you guys keep saying mindset, 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 mindset. And I don't think a lot of people understand this concept. We don't see with our eyes. Mm. We see with our mind. Mm. And our eyes are just one of the tools our mind uses to see. Mm -hmm. So if our mind is blind, it doesn't matter what our eyes can see. Yeah. But if our mind can see, it doesn't matter if our eyes are blind. Mm. And so what happens is, if your mind is blind to the possibility, then your eyes will be blind to the opportunity. Wow. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. What I want to throw in there also is that with the mindset, we need to understand it's important to share the knowledge within the household. Come on, it's care. so powerful to say, I want to take care of my family, take care of my children, take care of my wife and my husband. But, but understand, when you gain all this knowledge and you draw out this blueprint, this map to success, don't let it die with you. Come mm. on now. I want you to share the keys, share the knowledge, provide that information. If it's a great and honorable thing to want to do that, to take care of your household, but what if you're not around? Because that day will come. Mm -hmm. So don't leave them now trying to figure out what it is you set out for your legacy and you didn't leave the blueprint. You're, so you're so much better off giving your family, your children, and your, uh, your, your, your descendants financial literacy than you are giving them money. Yes. Mm. Now, yes. I like giving them both. Yeah. yeah. But start with the financial literacy because if you give them the money you don't give them the financial literacy, they're not going to know what to do with mm. it. I love the fact that my son and my daughter are both entrepreneurs. They, they're they both more successful in their early 30s than I ever thought about being in my early 30s. Mm. Right? I'm, and, and I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about me, I gave them, I'm talking about their own genius, yeah. their own wow. financial genius. What I want to do as we get ready to wrap this up I want each of us, because this is going to be 12, and so 12 is the number of perfect government. So I want each of us to give three strategies right. that will help black, more black people become rich. So I'm going to give three, okay. and then Marvin, uh, and then Storm, and then Ash, and then we're going to wrap it up. So um, the three principles that I would recommend for more black people to be rich is, number one, start your own business in your free time because you are going to create your freedom in your free time mm -hmm. if you use it properly. So that's the first thing. Start a business where you sell something. Now, there are a couple types of businesses you can start, and I'm gonna really, I'm gonna challenge you in this first point. Start a business where you sell something. There's a book by George Sabiris called um, Getting Black Folks to Sell, right? He also wrote one called The Black Man's Guide to Financial Freedom in America, right? Books are out of print. If you find mm -hmm. one, you might end up paying $1,000 for it. And I'm not selling one for a thousand dollars. I'm just telling you, like, fortunately for me, I found them when they were a couple hundred bucks, right? But one of the big problems is when we think about business as a community, we always think about starting some kind of service, lawn care service, janitorial service, uh, drywall service, painting service. Start it instead of starting a business that sells a service. Start a business that sells a product, because you can scale a product sales business. It's hard to scale to infinity and beyond um, a service-based business. 
if you sell a book and you sell a million books in a week, it's hallelujah time. If you paint houses and you get a, a million houses to paint in a week, now you're so overwhelmed, you're like, why did I start this kind of business? Okay, so start a business in your, start a business in your free time that will set you free. That's the first thing I'd recommend. Um, the second thing I'd recommend is get better at managing your money and stop mm. lying about how you feel about it so other people will be comfortable. What do I mean by that? People say, I don't care about money. Okay, if you'll lie about that, you'll lie about other stuff, right? I don't care the most about money. But I'm not going to say, I'm, if, you, if, if, I, if you ever hear me say I don't care about money, I want all y'all to know I'm lying, right? <laughs> but, I, but know this also, if I hear you say it, I know you're lying. Because why are you spending 8, 10, 12 hours a day working for something you don't care about? Yeah. You're not. You do care about money. You just don't care the most about money. Don't feel the need to justify your desire to create wealth and set your family free so other people can feel comfortable mm. about not thinking that you're greedy. I don't, I don't have time or I don't have the time or energy to manage other people's perceptions of me. Right? So that's number two. Um, the third thing that I would manage your money, and the reason I'm saying manage your money is because if you don't do a good job managing the little bit of money you have now, if you do figure out how to make a lot of money, all you're going to do is create a financial yep. disaster. Right? And um, the last thing I would say, the fast, the fast track, the shortcut. Find someone who is where you mm. are financially. Pay them whatever they charge and do everything they say. Trust what they know more than you trust what you know because here's one thing I found out. Really, really good coaching and entrepreneurship is very, very counterintuitive when you first get it. Mm. Think about it. If what the coach said made sense to you, you'd already be doing it. Mm. So those are my three. Marvin, tell us your three. All right, so the first thing I believe in Three, three things, right? You got to make more money. Make more money. You got to manage that money. Manage that then money. you got to multiply that money. Come on, yeah. Right? So when it comes to making more money, the number one thing that holds people back is that they attempt to do too many things at one time. Come on now. So you think about all of these people that's talking about these multiple income streams. I want to get seven streams of income, eight streams of income. You don't realize that they made a million before they started diversifying into all those different streams of income. So focus on one skill set. Put everything that you have into that one skill set because a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Go ahead so we want to be stable on that one thing. Right. Because we got to make the money. Right. So the second thing that I would tell you to do is to learn how to make decisions and take action. Procrastination is the assassination of your dreams. Procrastination is the thief of all joy. Many people never make it because they fail to act now. Mm. And what now means is no opportunity wasted. Mm. So if you're gonna make it to the next level and you're gonna start generating wealth, you're gonna have to learn how to make some decisions that maybe you're not even comfortable with because growth is gonna come when you're not comfortable. Yes, so sir. take an action fast. You got to remember that success loves speed. That's the second thing that I recommend. The third thing that I recommend if you want money, we want to make more money, stop listening to people who don't have more money Come on than now. you have. Stop listening. So, so here's what happens, right? You're, you're, a, you're a, a giraffe, which means you can see way above the trees. You got a clear vision. God has given you clear signs, clear wonders. You wake up knowing exactly what you want to do because he made that vision for you. And that vision is 100% clear. The problem is, is that when you start walking in that vision, you get nervous, you get apprehensive. So you want to go down and reach your neck down and get permission or approval or validation from a turtle. Mm. Now, that turtle isn't a bad person. That turtle actually loves you. That turtle cares about you. That turtle could be your spouse. It's not a problem, right? The problem is that for this particular vision, they can only see two feet in front of them mm. because it's your vision. They might be a giraffe in another area, but for that vision, mm, they're, they're a turtle, right? And here's the issue with that is that the oxygen from a giraffe flows through their neck. So if they stick their head down long enough, they will actually suffocate and they will pass out and sometimes even die. And that's the reason with a lot of people is that they're so busy looking for answers and validation from somebody else in the environment that you should have left a long time ago. Oh, they, wow. stu they stay stuck in that environment and they never generate the type of wealth that they know they can generate. The problem is, is that that turtle is seeing all of your risk as a cliff. And they want to save you and they're afraid that you're going to fall down that cliff. But your neck is so high that you see that cliff as simply a curve. And if you're ready to walk into your destiny, all you have to do is step over the curb and then you will be walking into your destiny and your financial future. And that's how we start to generate wealth. Taking action, focusing on one thing 
and actually getting mentorship from somebody who's done it and not seeking validation from somebody who has it. Man, go ahead, Marv. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so this is for all my employed people. First thing that I would highly recommend is looking at your job in a different light. Understand that your job is there to benefit you and work with you. So once you get that understanding, that will help you move forward and not to just say to yourself, I'm going to be here for these 30 years and just give in to that number. The second thing I need you to do now, I need you to calculate and say, what uh, do I need to do to replace my salary? Whatever that number of whatever you're making, now you want to replace your salary with an objective. And once you do replace your salary, what are you gaining? You're gaining time. Time is the most valuable thing that you can own. Once you now get that time back that you were given to your job, what you're going to do is whatever you were doing to create that income, you're going to put that on repeat. You're going to do that again and again and again. And once you start doing that, you're going to learn the concept of delegating duties. Wow. I need you to understand how That's powerful good. that is. Mm. Once you delegate duties and release these things that you want to hold on to, you're not able to grow. You're able to expand. You're able to become a visionary mm. because it takes vision to be able to see the things that no one has been able to share with you. It's not going to be your friend. It's not going to be a spouse. It may not be. It, like, and another thing, and I hate to really gloss over this. Don't expect your best friends and family members to become your partners. Mm. Don't expect them to become your cheerleaders. And that's not a bad thing. They're there and they, they know you for who you are and for what you have showed them from the beginning. Mm. So they don't expect you a lot of times to achieve because you haven't done it in the, in the last 20, 30, 40 years. So it's up to you to now step up and do that thing you always wanted to do. So those are my three things. Respect your job on another level. Understand your salary. Be prepared to replace that salary and put that thing on repeat. Let's go. Good stuff. All right, Good all right, stuff. All right. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. No three, pressure. Three things that that B do have, right? Mm. Number one, I need you to be who God who God put you here to be. Uh, if you, I don't care what scripture you look at, uh, you are all made in the image and likeness of the Most High God. Come on, right? Man. And so, if if that's the case, if you're made in the image and likeness of God, then just be that right be that every single day because a lot of us are trying to figure out what do you have to do in order to access the abundance that's already your birthright mm. right the, the, the abundance is already your birthright and you keep asking yourself what do I have to do to access that abundance but I'm saying you have to ask yourself who do I have to be Come to on allow now. the abundance right mm. so once you become who God told you to become you are going to allow the abundance. Because you're not being, what you're doing is you're blocking that abundance and you're asking yourself, where is it? But if you if you are and you become who God told you to be, then you are just going to allow it and you're gonna understand that this is who you are and this is a life you're supposed to live. So that's number one. Number two, I need you to do what you should be doing as you're being, mm. right? I'm gonna say that again. I need you to do what you should be doing as you're being. If you understand that you're made in the image and likeness of God, and God is the greatest, and God is infinite possibilities, then guess what you have to do? You have to do the things that match that being where it says that you're infinite possibilities. And so the, the, that doubt, that fear, that thing that's stopping you from doing what, you, what you're supposed to be doing, mm. that's not of God because that, that is not your, your natural nature. You allow the people around you, you allow the energy, you allow what you see with your eyes, you allow your circumstance, you allow your experience, you allow all these things to stop you from being the, the, the natural being that you are. So number two, I need, you to, I need you to do, right? Faith without works is dead. So if you have faith and you're not doing the work, then that, that you really do not have faith, right? Ooh. And then lastly, I need you to have, right? And, and, and this is going to be serious, especially for our people. We get to a level of success, wow. and we start being, we start feeling guilty. Ooh. We start having su su survivor's guilt. We start having remorse. We start saying, well, I got to this level. Like, like, like Marvin said, let me go back down to this level so I can bring everybody up with me, right? And what we do is we stop ourselves from having the experiences that God wanted us to have. And if we don't have those experiences, we can't continue to elevate and go to the next level. 
right? And so you have to be able to enjoy your success because as you enjoy your success, you are, you are telling yourself that you are worth it. You are telling yourself that I deserve it. You are telling yourself that I want to get closer to God because if you think that God created this beautiful world with all these beautiful experiences just so that you can suffer, then you don't know God. Come mm. on, man. Good stuff. Good man. stuff. Wow, you guys, are, you guys are lit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> level of litness. Right? <laughs> Y'all are. So this is, this is so phenomenal. Um, I think about what you said about be, do, have. Um, being is the input for doing. doing but, and doing is the output. Doing is the input for having. And having is the output. Mm. Um, until you become who you need to become, you'll never be able to do what you desire to do. And until you do the things that are necessary to be done, you'll never have all the things you desire to have. Guys, I am telling you, this has been remarkable. And I know... I know, I know y'all have a conference coming up. Yes. And okay. I know a lot of these folks watching on YouTube want to know, where can I hear more from these guys? Well, first, can we do a big reveal? Do a big reveal. Uh -oh. All right. Do a big, big reveal. reveal. So, All right. So tell us, tell us what the conference is. We about to. When yeah. the conference is, <laughs> who's speaking at the conference. Share that, Mark. Well, first, um, obviously, um, Marvin Mitchell was speaking at the conference, right? Oh, no. So no. I will. In fact, if, I, I work, if you ain't coming, hey, I ain't going. Now, now we, 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 we gave y'all some good gems today on, on life insurance. I know Storm mentioned some things. I mentioned some things. I didn't even get into some of the things that are going to create generational wealth three generations down the line. We didn't get into the Rockefeller Trust. We're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about how you can actually implement that in your family. Mm. Um, Storm is, is, is there, of course. Everybody on this stage is here, right? Storm is going to give you more detail about about the real estate play that you could do, where as little as six, seven, eight thousand dollars, you can retire twenty five years less than what the government tells you that you can mm, retire. So Ash is going to go deeper into the fifteen streams of income with the books, and also talk to you about really just getting you going and getting you flowing and getting you in action. And Myron is going to be a special uh, special guest. He's actually a partner of this as well. So I'm excited about Myron coming. And you already know Myron, those who listen to Myron, he's bringing it every time. But Myron promised us that he's bringing it a little bit extra special this time. So, so I'm excited about that. Now, one of the big reveals, we also got Darius Daniels, if you know Darius Daniels. Darius Daniels is going to be in the house. We also got Delatorio McNeil that's going to be in the house. We also have Eileen Wilder, Eileen Wilder who, who, who's house. going to be in the house. Coach Kelly J Coach Kelly will be in J. the house. Um, and we got we got so many people. Rachel, oh, we working on her. Yeah, we working on her. We might we, we it's kind of if she may be there. Now, I want to also let y'all know one of our big special guests. Let, let's not talk well, about Didi though. We got Didi. Oh, Didi! Didi Bresky is in the house. Didi Bresky is in the house. We got so many people that's gonna be in the house. It's gonna it's gonna be crazy. Uh, David Shands, if you know David Shands, he's gonna be in the house. Um, and we got Wall Street Trapper. Wall Street Trapper is gonna be Ian Dunlap is gonna be in the house. And um and we got we got somebody that I'm about to say that's that's not even not even a keynote, yeah, not even a keynote. We got we got Grant Cardone who says that I'm gonna come out and give some things to the community. We got that we got that contract under wraps today. A billionaire is gonna teach you some things about be, becoming a billionaire. And then y'all ready? Drum roll. We got the honorable Mr. T D Jakes. Bishop T D Jakes is coming into the house. So look, let me tell y'all, this is a premium event for premium people. We have opportunities for you to get in get in at general. But we also have opportunities for you to show, you know what, I'm a premium person. I want Diamond Access, which is going to give you backstage passes, which is going to give you Diamond Lounge access. This is going to be in Miami, Florida. It's going to give you access to a ball, you all. We're doing a ball. Uh, we're doing a yacht party. Oh, that Saturday. oh, it's a black tie affair, you all. Premium people only. If you're looking to really get to the bag, if you're really looking to create wealth, whether you, it don't matter who you are, black, white. I know we're talking about black wealth, but no matter who you are, we want you to be there. Um, we got Nick. Nick that's going to be in the house from, that's going to give you a motivational story you don't want to forget. But look, let me tell you, if you go to path2prosperityconference.com, I know it's listed. There's a link in the description, too. There's a link in the description, path2prosperityconference.com. The date is between October 20th and the 22nd. And let me tell you all, we are bringing it on a whole nother level. You have never seen a conference like the one that we are about to show you, and the talent. We have musical guests that we're not announcing yet. So it's gonna yeah, we're not. Yeah. You're not. It's going to be life-changing, transformational. Oh, man, it's, it's crazy. I'm excited.
So, I'm excited. So it's going to be an unbelievable, amazing, amazing conference. It could be your first base on the path to financial freedom for your family. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and you're going to be able to meet people and network with people that you'll be able to stay connected with for the rest of your lives. Mm -hmm. So I know for me, um, I, went, I remember I went to my first seminar in 1985 in Chicago, Illinois. And, and, and I know this is going to sound crazy. I got started with this company where we were selling life insurance and we were selling investments. And they had this thing called a fast start school. I said, okay, I'm going to go to this thing. But I didn't have any money. I was broke as a joke and ready to choke. Right? Mm. And I didn't have enough money for the ho a hotel room. Right. So the guy who recruited me into the insurance business said, well, me and my wife, will pay for you, you and your wife to go. Okay, so cool. We're good. So we drove up there. And I think, I don't even think we drove up to Chicago. I think we rode there because we lived in Gary, Indiana at the time. And like all of the money I had to my name, mm. he bought us a ticket to get in. He paid for our hotel room. I think we might, might have ridden with them or we may have driven. It was a long time ago. It was 1985, y'all. Okay. Um, and we, I only had like $3 and something cents in all change, no dollar bills to my name. Mm. And it was a two-day conference. There was a 7-Eleven across the street. We went across the street, bought a couple of bananas and whatever junk food that that $3 or something would buy and fasted the rest of the time. And we went to that conference and it changed my life forever. Wow. For the first time in my life, I saw people making the kind of money I had never heard of. Mm. And the one lesson my dad taught me when I was a little kid, he said, if somebody else can do it, you can do it. Mm. So I saw those people in that stage and they were making 10000 a month in 1985. 20,000, 50,000 a month in 1985. I'm like, what are y'all talking about? Wow. But I know one thing. If y'all can do it, I can do it. And I was right, but I didn't do it overnight. Mm. My overnight success from that point on took 14 years before I had six figures. Wow. But here's what most, most people say, 14 years? It must not have been very good. It must not have worked. Here's what people don't realize. The 14 years is going to pass whether you make six figures or not. Mm. Right? right? Yeah. Took me 14 years to make six figures. And five years from that time, I had my first seven figure year. Mm. Like, where you're headed is far more important than how long it takes you to get there. So with that in mind, make sure every one of you get on the path to prosperity. I got to say Thank one last goodness. thing. Yep, Before we go, I got to say one last thing. I almost forgot about this. You see, rich, rich people know the value of everything, the price for nothing. Poor people know the price for everything and the value of nothing. See, when you get this ticket, I want you to understand this is an investment in your future. This is a seed. Too many people never get to the harvest because they're too busy hanging on to their seed, thinking that their seed is the harvest. You got to release the seed in order to grow. And we want you to grow and build wealth. But I had to mention this, even though we're talking about value, we are offering 75 percent off the diamond ticket hey. for the for the next couple of days. So if you're watching this right now and you want to get 75 percent off, this is your time. This is your season to take advantage of that. So, and with that in mind, understand this too about the seed. The seed that you're sowing, you're not sowing into us, right? The tickets are going to pay for the conference. Mm -hmm. the, seed, the money that you're buying, you're sowing a seed into your own life. The investment you're making is not in us. Mm -hmm. The investment you're making is in yourself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for those of you who it's for, we'll see you there. For those of you who it's not where it's about for, congratulations on being smart enough to watch this video. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, in between time, peace out, Cub Scouts. Make Let's sure go. by the way you like, comment, subscribe, and share this video and do all that other YouTube stuff. All right, we'll see y'all in the next